Hello and welcome to the session in which we will discuss employee stock purchase plans or known as ESPP. What is ESPP? That's the first thing we need to know. Basically, it's when the company grants you the right as an employee to buy the shares of stocks. Is that really a right? Because you can buy any shares of stocks at any time you would like to, whether you are an employee or not. Well, guess what? They will give you a discount. So they will sell it to you lower than the ongoing price. Now, one Christmas, literally, I, wor I work at Walmart third shift. And every time you will go to the restroom, there was a sign and they will have the stock price of Walmart, whatever that stock price happens to be that day. And they will say, next depends on you to remind their employees that they own shares in the company and because they own the shares if they work harder the stock price would go higher and they are better off so a company like walmart offers their employee this employee stock purchase plan and i told you that i worked at merrill lynch at some point and i used to handle employee stock options and i also we had employee stock purchase plan so how does it work let's dive into it let's assume you work for walmart and Walmart will tell you if you would like to enroll once you qualify to enroll there's a period where you can enroll called the offering period or think of the offering period as the grand date there's an offering period and if you enroll during the offering period at some point it's usually the end of the quarter usually it's the end of the quarter you can exercise to buy the shares at a certain price to buy the shares so what you do let's assume for the sake of simplicity you are making a two thousand dollar a week and you will tell them i would like to deduct uh, let's say twenty dollars well two hundred dollars ten percent of my paycheck to buy those stocks so what happened is this every week you work for walmart walmart will put away from your paycheck two hundred dollars then here comes the here comes the exercise date now on the exercise date they can they will buy the shares of walmart they will buy let's assume you end up with having let's and let's assume you enrolled for five weeks you had a thousand dollar in total in your escrow account which is an account that's yours but walmart is holding it now on this date they will have they would say for example they will have the policy the policy is basically uh, usually it's 10 or 15 percent i don't remember walmart so whatever the, the ongoing price is they will buy the stock at 15 percent of the market price either they, they would use the mark fair market value of that date they could use the fair market value of the offering price simply put they will they would allow you to buy the shares at a discount that's basically what it is so as an employee you can buy the shares at a discount while someone else so let's assume the stock price is 64.15 let's assume someone else wants to buy the stock they will pay 64.15 if it's 64.25 if you want to buy it you'll pay 85 percent you'll pay 54 dollars and 63 cent so you'll buy the stock at a discount that's basically what it is and that money is deducted from your payroll in a nutshell that's what employee stock purchase plan is before we proceed any further i have a public announcement about my company farhatlectures.com farhat accounting lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your cpa exam preparation as well as your accounting courses my cpa material is aligned with your cpa review course such as becker roger wiley gleam miles my accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses, broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. Now it's listed under stock options and the reason is because it works from a tax perspective. It, ter it works like a uh, incentive it's a qualified stock option plan specifically it worked like the incentive stock options that we talked about in the prior session so we did cover the non-qualified stock options we did cover the incentive stock options in this session we will focus on the taxation of this ESPP so the first thing is ESPP it has to be qualified to be considered an ESPP to, to qualify well what are the qualifications just like an incentive stock option plan you have to have certain criteria to be considered an incentive stock option plan to be considered a qualified stock stock options well the, the, the qualification is the employee must be in writing and approved by the shareholders so the shareholders say yes we want to grant we want to have this plan for our employees the employee are required to exercise their option within a period of 27 months from the date on which the options were granted or offered. So after that, that 
that that grant you have 27 months to exercise usually it's within three to six months all full-time employees can participate except highly compensated employees and those with less than two years of employment should be included in the plan so when i worked that christmas at walmart i could not participate because you have to be there for two years and if you are highly compensated one of those top individual at walmart also you cannot participate because this is for kind of for lower level management each employee receiving stock should not own more than five percent of the company voting power including its corporation parent and subsidiary simply put you cannot own more than five percent forget about walmart you know it's very hard to own five percent of walmart even for large huge investment banks but the point is uh, you cannot be uh, you cannot own five percent you cannot be a large in quote a, a large shareholder also the exercise should be at least equal to 85 percent of the fair market value of the company at the grand date or at the exercise date whichever is lesser so simply put they'll give you the discount and discount is basically the maximum discount is 15 percent it could be 10 it could be five sometimes they don't give you any discount okay you just you can buy it you know you basically you will deduct money from your paycheck and you'll buy the company stocks if you want to you do that if you want to do that that's fine there's no really any incentive but you're hoping that the stock price will go up and each employee is is allowed to acquire the maximum of twenty five thousand per year now you can buy more stocks but it cannot be considered an e, as an espp employee stock purchase plan also similar to incentive stock option once the stock is exercised it must be held by the employee for at least one year after the exercise date and two years from the grant date or two years from the offering date just like the iso the employee stock option plan we have an offering date or a grand date so let's assume the offering date is september 1st 20x2 20x2 now let's assume the exercise is was september 1st 20x3 so you exercise it a year later now you bought it and you held the stock until 9120x4 so you held it one year from the exercise date okay now you can sell it here now it's considered capital gain and you have to hold it two years from the grand date or the offering date that's what we're saying exactly like incentive stock options also the employee should remain an employee for uh, for the corporation from the grand date up until three months before the exercise date and this period is extended and if the option was granted due to a permanent and total disability now what are the taxation of ESPP so what are the tax consequences now remember here all what you're doing is you're buying stocks similar to the incentive stock option it's not granted as compensation you are taking your own money from your salary and asking the company to to use it to buy stocks therefore the employees are not taxed when the option is granted of course or the option when exercised when there's tax consequences when you actually sell as a result if the option lapse and exercise the employee are not allowed to recognize any loss because they did not recognize any income to be taxed in the first place so it so it's not taxable it's not deductible if the exercise price is less than the stock fair value on the grand date the employee recognizes an ordinary income when the price is sold so if you bought the if you bought it less than the fair market value if the exercise price is less usually it is that portion is ordinary income the difference between the exercise price and the fair market value of the stock when sold or the difference between the exercise price and the fair value of the stock when granted depending on which date we are looking at now the remaining is classified capital gain and we'll work an example don't worry about this so simply put the discounted part the discounted part the amount that's below the fair value because you bought it below the fair value that's considered ordinary income basically they gave you a discount now if you made any profit after you bought the stock you have the basis any profit above the fair value it's treated as capital gain so the remaining is capital gain now what are the tax consequences for the employer for the company there is no tax consequences why not because all what the company is doing is issuing stocks you're not going to get a deduction for that simply put they're issuing stocks to their employees the employee said we're going to invest in the company take part of our salary and buy the stock the best way to illustrate this is to look at an example march 15 john received an employee stock purchase plan as follows so we have an espp in in effect the number of shares to be purchased 200 they can buy it at 90 dollars 
the fair market value of the stock at the option is at the option grand date is is 100 simply put they're giving them a 10 percent discount on april 3rd year two when john when the fair market value was 120 john exercised the option they bought the option and they waited until may 10th year three, year three and that's when they sold it they did really good i mean this john did really good simply put they end up all in all they buy something for 90 and they sold it for 180 okay that's what they did because they can buy that's what that's what the exercise price should john report any income on the grand date the grand date is when they told you you can buy the stock for 90 dollars the answer is no there's nothing there's you don't recognize any income nothing happened all what they're saying is you can buy the stock for $90 if you're interested sign up for the plan and by the end of the quarter whatever money we deduct from your paycheck will buy the stock there's no tax consequences determine the adjusted basis of the stock held by John on April 3rd so April 3rd when the fair market value of the stock is 120 well guess what you bought them you paid $90 actually John paid $90 they have money deducted from their paycheck and they bought the stock at $90. So they have $18,000 deducted from their paycheck, and that's their basis. That's exactly their basis. What is the amount and type of income that John would report when they sold the stock? Now, when they sold the stock, they have 200 shares. They sold it at 180. That this, this was the proceeds. Now, as of May 10th, John already met the requirement for the holding period. So this is an ISO. Therefore, he should recognize a gain of 18000 what what how did we get to that well the proceeds are 36000 the basis are 18000 but now what we have to do we have a gain of 18000 how is that gain is treated remember the amount that's below the exercise price we, remember we bought it for 90 on the grand date is what it was 100 so we there's a 10 dollar discount we bought it at 10 dollar discount times 200 shares of this amount 2000 it's going to be considered ordinary income and what's not ordinary income it's going to be considered capital gain and this is what john likes like likes the capital gain but that two thousand dollar because of that ten dollar discount will be treated as ordinary income what is the employer's tax uh, consequences in other words do they have any deduction if so how much and the answer is no espp are not provided as a compensation and as a result the employer don't receive any tax deduction all what happened is you took your money which you earned you went back and you told the company I want to buy the stock well in this situation the company sold you the stock at a 10% not technically 10% but a $10 discount I'm not sure if that's considered 10% or not at a $10 discount let me just put the $10 discount okay yes exactly if you take 100 times 10% that's $10 they gave it to you at a ten dollar discount that's all what happened what should you do now go to farhat lectures and look at additional resources to help you understand whether you are an accounting student cpa candidate or an enrolled agent good luck study hard invest in your accounting career it's worth it and stay safe